Next, we've got here some a great story about Twitter. Twitter are launching a new feature, which I think has only been announced just today. Maybe yesterday, let's see. But um, new feature actually uh, launched yesterday. Uh, they're launching a new feature called Instagram, well, copying the Instagram Stories method. And I'm pretty sure you guys are aware that Instagram Story copied that thingy feature off of Snapchat. It's the kind of thing that happens a lot in startups and people don't really mind it. I guess in any, any other industry, kind of plagiarism on that kind of level will get called out. It'll be a shame. It'll be something that you'd be ashamed of doing. You wouldn't want to be caught doing it. But in startup world, whatever your competitor is doing that works, your investors kind of, you know, caught. Uh, your investors are basically would argue yeah your investors will basically argue that it was imperative for you to do the same thing you have to kind of um you have to do it because they think that you know they don't want their competitors to steal a march on them and if the investors are all about making sure they get the best returns on their money then you as a founder you have to kind of acquiesce with it and also maybe another part of it too there is a side of it where startup brands are sort of start the companies are sort of look there is no one um all-knowing all-powerful kind of you know, startup or service or product out there that's going to dominate everything, maybe unless you're kind of Google search. No one's really done that. For the most part, there's always kind of every, there's an alternative for everything. So maybe some startup founders are like of the thinking of like, you know what, we're all kind of contributing to this kind of greater goal of, I don't know, lowering emissions or getting more people on electric vehicles. So it doesn't matter if I copy your feature or if I copy your kind of style of bikes or style of scooters, as long as we're getting everyone out of you know, um, kind of, you know, um, carbon emission, carbon emissioning cars and all that sort of shit. And again, on scooters, it's all well and good. So maybe that's part of it. But I also think in general, it's just a way for them to kind of, you know, because, because, you know, innovation so hard to come by, especially nowadays, um, to kind of iterate those ideas, to kind of get them out in the right manner and to also kind of hope it works because, you know, no one wants to end up with like, you know, what's that, what's that Google social media platform? No one wants to end up like that, right? No one wants to end up wasting money on engineers and time putting a putting some product out that no one really fucking cares about. So if you can kind of co-opt a product that's already working and make it work within your infrastructure, then so be it. And of course, Twitter in the last few years has kind of seen a bit of resurgence. You could say it was part of, partly the Donald Trump effect, right? I'm sure Jack Dorsey maybe behind closed doors would be, you know, as much as he kind of derides or he kind of is a bit annoyed that, you know, essentially Trump has... In one way, I think I remember Joe Rogan saying like Trump is basically when Trump got elected, he basically gave reason or basically gave carte blanche to like douchebags to be absolutely douchebags, right? Because he's the ultimate kind of I don't give a shit about what everyone thinks about me. I can do, I'm just going to do and say what I want. So he kind of gave people like that an excuse. So maybe if you're Jack Dorsey, you're like, ah, oh, he kind of maybe legitimized people being mean and just being, you know, um, yeah, just being mean and overly overly combative on twitter in some respects which is not, maybe not true because it, it was a thing that happening for a long time but you know on the other side too he's also maybe thankful for donald trump because he was able to breathe new life into a platform that was by all means or by all indication if you judge if you believe what the critics and the kind of media analysts and all the commentators say it was basically dying and on this kind of last legs and he kind of gave it a bit more of a legitimate voice it's, part, it's basically the only platform where you can do these kind of real weird mini blogs kind of entries and get your thoughts out there in written form of course it's not the best place to kind of deep into some dive deep into some uh complex issues and stories but you've seen loads of really interesting things pop up from there from that woman remember that girl that had that story about being a stripper or being an escort or something her story got bought uh, someone bought the rights to it and now they're developing into a film. People have been able to, essentially the Me Too movement brought down one of the most powerful men in Hollywood at the time and Harvey Weinstein. Loads of amazing things have kind of emanated from Twitter and you can kind of, in some ways you can say there was a post-Trump phase in Twitter and there was a, uh, sorry, there's a pre-Trump phase and there was a post-Trump phase in Twitter and now they're obviously evolving and trying to grow it as they can. And this new feature that's been kind of put out there by somebody that's, I think, part of the Twitter team it looks like it's a very interesting feature and something that I think will work pretty well, like a stories feature that will work well on Twitter. So this is a tweet from a guy called uh, Kai Von Bakerpour. He's a product leader at Twitter and a co-founder of Periscope. So obviously somebody that's um, very much into, that's very much a part of the Twitter infrastructure and will know what's actually going on. So he kind of announces the other day and all the blogs are picking up. So it says the following. It's a tweet I'm going to read out to you and you can see on the screen, hopefully, if you're watching this via the YouTubes. So this is the following. Um, everyday people come to Twitter to see what's happening. One of the unique things about Twitter is that what's happening is fueled by people sharing their thoughts openly through uh, through tweets. But sharing your thoughts publicly can be intimidating, which is very true. I think a lot of people have said, I think he's taking, oh, I think he's got a quote there because I think 
there is a common thing in Twitter land where people are like very much against sharing. You no, know, where people. I didn't know there was a thing, but people would say that they have loads of stuff in their drafts that they would never post because sometimes it's like, you know, you might be drunk or it might be a thought that you might think might be a bit problematic. It might be some, something in general that you're not really well informed about. So it's kind of like fleeting, kind of like, you know, ignorant tweets, so quote unquote. You probably kind of leave them to one side and then you kind of go for the low brow, you know, you know, little meme, little joke here and there, the little LOL moment and just keep it moving. The tweet continues here. Um... Da, 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 da. People often tell us that uh, people often tell us that they don't feel comfortable tweeting because tweets can be seen and replied to by anybody. Feel permanent and performative. How many likes and retweets will this get? Many of us can probably emphasize this, which is true because I think that was part of the reason why people were very much uh, um, pushing them to get an edit button for spell checks. But I think Jack Dorsey is very much against it. I'm not really sure what the reason was behind it, but obviously, I guess in some respects, part of the appeal of Twitter, part of what's kind of made it popular is the fact that some people have been able to get cancelled, right? Because of saying the wrong thing or tweeting out the wrong thing or making the wrong response. So the idea that someone can continually keep editing their tweets might not be the best way to go about it. Maybe they could introduce some sort of timer where you can only edit your tweet within the first 30 minutes or five minutes of you putting out the tweet, a timer starts ticking down. And after that, you can't really um, edit it because... The thing about the internet, even if you put out a, a dumb tweet that doesn't really resonate with people, it's not as if you deleting it is ever going to, you know, make sure it's gone forever. People are still going to take a screenshot of it and just save it into their document. So it's not as if your tweet kind of disappears. So the edit function would still work in that respect, even if they had an option where you could edit it, you know, the bo- button at the bottom where, you know how you say view hidden replies, you could click that button because it could show you all the edits that have been done prior to what you're seeing there. It will say, oh, this, this, this tweet has four edits. You click it and it shows you all the edits I've kind of gone through. Maybe that's the thing. But anyway, continues here. Um, next tweet here says the following. We've been listening to this feedback and working on creating to create new capabilities that address some of the anxieties that hold people back from talking on Twitter. Um, so I'm assuming they're trying to drive engagement as well. This is part of the product feature in it. Um, today in Brazil only, we're starting a test on Android and iOS for one of those new capabilities. It's called Twitter Fleets. Let's start this video again. So you've got, you got somebody tweeting here. On Twitter, um, in Portuguese, of course. Oh no, saying it on no, this is, this is an iMessage. Oh no, is it a DM? It's a DM, right? Somebody DMing people, and then on top of it, on the DMs, you've got people's circles, like similar like Instagram stories, where you can kind of click. I'm assuming on their profile picture, and it'll bring up a screen similar to Instagram stories, where you can see their tweet stories. Click it, boom, it comes up. And then you can tweet a kind of, you know, a non a nondescript tweet that you don't really want to put on your own timeline. And it goes up on your story, I'm assuming, right? There's another tweet. So you put something again. You put a bit of media on it. Oh, wow, you can put a little thing on it. So it's basically, it's basically like Instagram stories. Completely. That's a really clever idea. I love it. So you continue here. Uh, fleets are a way to share fleeting thoughts. Unlike tweets, fleets uh, disappear after 24 hours and don't get retweets, likes, or public re- replies. People can only react to fleets via DMs instead of showing up in people's head- head- headlines. Timelines, sorry, fleets are viewed by tapping your avatar. That's perfect. Uh, first of all, I love the name. Whoever came up with a name in house, like, congratulations to you. Tweets and fleets is fucking incredible. I think that's going to be something that's going to be part of our everyday lexicon, right? How tweets have become part of our everyday kind of conversation, right? Um, I think fleets is going to enter, 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 be reintroduced into the conversation too. I like the idea that you can only reply to via DM similar to Instagram story, so you don't have the idea of it kind of clogging up your main feed. And just the idea that it's a 24-hour only thing. You just kind of post out there in the moment and kind of get it going. Of course, it's going to encourage celebrities to kind of, you know, say the most wildest shit on Twitter. Maybe that would be an interesting thing. Maybe Instagram would now end up being like, you know how people do that meme where it's like, how you are on Instagram, how you are on Facebook, how you are on LinkedIn, how you are on Twitter. That might be a thing where you might be a little bit more ratchet on your in Twitter fleets than you would be on your Instagram stories. That'd be pretty cool, isn't it? Like you'll be like you just say the most wildest shit on Twitter because you know it can go away in twenty four hours, and you know you know you might not have the same amount of followers on Twitter that you do on Instagram. Because I think for the most part, unless you're I don't know, I guess unless you're like Kylie or somebody, it feels like most people have. A lot more followers. Most people have the most followers they have are mostly on Instagram, right? Because I guess the idea, because you know, it's pictures and shit. And if you're a girl, you can essentially get your your engagement is probably a lot higher on Instagram. I'm assuming than Twitter, maybe I don't know. So maybe again, that will probably lend itself to it, this idea that your Twitter is sort of like your your kind of stories for Instagram in that respect. Um, here's some screenshots as well we can see. 
of the actual app working fleets so because you've got twitter screen you pop over there with a button it flows up with it again with a box to write in and i think it's pretty cool um it continues here again i know what you're thinking that sounds a lot like stories yes there are many similarities with stories format that will feel familiar to people there are also a few intentional differences to make the experience more focused on sharing and seeing people's thoughts yeah but it's still stories which doesn't matter i don't really care okay so you can scan through it like that that's interesting isn't it so you go to someone's stories and you click it and then you kind of you scan through it like instead of on instagram you know how you scan through it like left to right and this you kind of scroll up and down like you would do on your twitter feed or your instagram main feed so that's, that's a pretty cool feature on it in general you can kind of like it i guess little button there underneath you and kind of like the thing and i'm assuming they get that through on their dm like you would do on other things and you know also it does maybe because these are all kind of clever starts are really clever in the idea that they introduce product usually to kind of drive engagement so maybe it's a cool idea to kind of get people to kind of do these Instagram, sorry, these Twitter fleets, post, their, post them up on their stories. Then it also gets people to kind of react to these thing fleets and it goes directly to a DM, which gets people to go into their DMs more. Because maybe there is an understanding that people don't go in their DMs more often than not. So they want to probably drive the DM engagement up a little bit more, which is obviously going to happen with this sort of thing. Um, and yeah, in general, I think there's going to be a lot of fun to be had for it in general going forward. Uh, more tweets here. We're hoping that fleets can help people share the, the fleeting thoughts that uh, that would be unlikely to tweet. This is a sustainable change for Twitter, so we're excited to learn by testing it, starting with what in Brazil and seeing how our customers use it. That is honestly really, really cool. I love the idea, man. I think it's going to work out really well. I think we're going to see a lot more engagement on Twitter with it. And I think, again, it's just a it's a great... I, love, I just love to see how, they, how they've been reacting to things. You know, the increase in the kind of... Uh, the character count on your tweets was a really good introduction, I thought, by Twitter. And the idea that they just kind of... They really got into the weeds of stuff and really tried to make sure that they kind of are... Uh, testing and implementing new features just to kind of keep the app, the app fresh and they've also noticed that people are kind of you know doing a lot on there so why not kind of engage them a lot more and kind of give them a reason to do it more and this idea that people have different sort of personas different platforms is really helpful for twitter because i think we're, we're kind of reached past the stage because everyone always says oh what's this instagram it's gonna kill instagram i don't think that's ever gonna happen i think we've reached a stage where now there's going to be other platforms coming out like tiktok for instance that call for a certain type of media a certain type of creative output a certain type of approach but there's not gonna be something that's gonna take over like before oh this thing killed that that thing killed that they don't think we're in that platform anymore i think people are more than happy to have different um user profiles on different platforms that do different things right so i'm sure if you go on someone's tiktok that you're following on instagram they have completely different content on there for if the ones that are doing it well anyway you should have bespoke content for each platform you shouldn't be trying to you know just copy and pasting your stuff on there which is why i get annoyed at people that used to just copy and paste their fucking tweets onto fucking instagram it's super annoying but nowadays people don't do that nowadays people just write on their instagram stories and share it oh yeah that's also a thing as well isn't it people do that quite often people share i do that myself I'll make like a massive comment about something and I'll share it on my Instagram stories um, with an image on it. So yeah, that might be part of the reason why as well. Okay, cool. These guys, well, it proves that how smart these guys are anyway because they're already thinking about these things way ahead of us anyway. So um, definitely to keep an eye out for that one. Launching in Brazil now as a kind of trial period and I'm sure we're going to see it kind of roll out later on when everyone else gets wind of it and it's like, oh my God, I want that. And then they're going to obviously 